Hello and welcome to SciShow Talk Show, the day on SciShow where we talk to cool people about cool stuff. Today we have joining us Dr. Lindsay Doe, host of Sexplanations and sexologist extraordinaire. How's it going? Pretty great. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. It's been a weird day. I'm glad you called me a sexologist because I am going to talk to you about clits and I'm not a clitorologist. Okay. Here we go. This is a model. I think I got it for 20 bucks off of Amazon. Mm -hmm. Super cheap but has enough detail to include the circulatory system. And you can see a clitoris on it, true? Yes. But you can't really see the clitoris. And um, I don't know if it's that they're lazy or they didn't know it, but because a lot of the model shows the internal parts, mm-hmm. they should show the internal part of the clitoris. Well, it's, it's, I mean, it's a small model. There's not a lot of space to do that with. I'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt. Hey, Is this just an egg? Or, yeah, or, okay. but, but we're, it's a model they, they of the female the reproductive system. The clitoris the is really important. I agree. I agree with you. Just like the egg is important. They should have over here a blown up clitoris. They should just remove this. What is that? This is the urethra and the bladder. It doesn't even matter. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this isn't part of this. No, and they can yeah, put that's the... that's true. So... Maybe you don't know what the clitoris looks like. Do you know what the clitoris looks like? Can I teach you and yeah, your people? Yeah, I mean, just go ahead and... Okay. In a lot of the textbook diagrams of female reproductive systems, you have this tiny little carrot-sized baby carrot mm-hmm. nub that maybe goes in what would be about a centimeter, and then it just cuts off. And that is the illustrated information that human sexuality students are getting around the world. Hmm. Even though in 1998, it's not the case. Right, we we found that it's not the case. This is a clitoris. Is a clitoris. (laughs) Is a clitoris. We're not not, going (laughs) to find out. (laughs) No. (laughs) uh, This is not what in my mind what a clitoris looks like. Because it has these tail things. (laughs) I was not aware of them. How could you be? Nobody teaches it, and if we talk about it, then you have the repercussion of profanity being right. tagged with using profane language. So in an anatomy lesson, <laughs> you will get something that looks like these. Okay. If you're lucky. There will be labia minora, which are these inner lips, the vestibule, which is you know the porch to the vagina, this space here. Then there will be a metis, which is the opening to the urethra. Mm-hmm the vaginal entratus, which is the opening to the vagina, and then up here, you may or may not see the clitoral glands or the head. Okay. And I'm gonna point to myself because when I teach about this, I use my head as the glands or head of the clitoris, and then covering that, oh yeah, there's a hood. There's a hood. Okay, this is called the prepuce, and it covers the, the shaft of the clitoris, but the rest of it is actually internal, it goes in the body like that. And what is the purple so thing? So it's underneath the labia. Some, like a musculature? This is another part of the clitoris, of uh, vestibul- vestibular bulbs. So there's, there's even more to it. There's even more to it. Oh my God. Can we say much about the function of these various parts? No. Mm. They're not sure if it was adaptive or reproductive. What they do know is that this is the most highly erogenous zone on a biosex female body. And what it will actually do when and if the person becomes aroused is go from this flaccid state to become more erect. And when it does that and stretches out, the clitoris will actually pull up under the hood more, Mm -hmm. right? Because it's going like that. Mm -hmm. And so it's actually harder to find when it's aroused or harder to find when you would be looking for it. Hmm. That's annoying. (laughs) (laughs) You guys are allowed to laugh. (laughs) Oh, man. Yeah. So that's the science of my field, at least, is that there's... So much that people aren't talking about. Well, and what I'm seeing here is, so this is all erogenous tissue. Mm-hmm. So then this is wrapping around the and whole this. vagina. Yeah. Um, Here's a vagina, so, and I put a little bit of hymen in it for you. Oh, good. Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> 
I think it would be better if if we could hear you guys laughing. Actually, <laughs> um, so is that a, is that removable or is that just some chewing gum that you put in there? That is clay that I didn't bake. Okay, but you can. Did you make this yourself? I did. Oh. I don't know why I didn't think that. When I first saw this in your bag before the show started, I was like, why did she bring a trachea? That's a weird thing to bring along. And then you're like, ah, oh, it's a I'm vagina. Yeah. Okay. What a wonderful thing that you've made. Thank you. Um, so it can yeah, stand up on its own, too. I mean, it makes sense that there would be erogenous tissue to the sides of the vagina so that sex was pleasurable. Exactly. Fascinating. Well... If, uh, if somebody wants to get into, into studying female anatomy and learning more about this, these things that we apparently know very little about, uh, I would encourage them to do that. So we're going to be visited now by an animal. Uh, Jesse from Animal Wonders will be joining us, and uh, I think it's going to be a snake. How do you feel about that? Very excited. Me too. <laughs> Jesse, what have you brought us today? I brought a snake. Yeah, you did. This is a western hognose snake. It's beautiful. I like its patterns. Look at its face. Yeah, it has really interesting, weird. Oh, it's got it's got a it's got a snout. Yeah, it's yeah. Got a snout like it's a See? pig, or a hog. There maybe. you go. Exactly, exactly. The hog nose snake. Yeah, they're also called uh, blow snakes or bluffers too. Um, but do you're they, talking. Do they inflate themselves? I do. We'll talk about it. Okay. Yeah. Well, you called them blow snakes, and you didn't I expect know. me to mention I, that. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I know. So. You talked about the pattern first. Okay. Um, and what do you think it's mimicking? It's trying to mimic something. What do you think it's trying to mimic? Rocks on the ground? Well, it camouflage too, but it's trying to mimic another animal. Oh, um, a rattlesnake? Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Well so, done. Yeah, they're doing a pretty good job there. Mm -hmm. um, so it's going to do a couple other things too. Um, if it's really threatened, first thing it's going to do is it's going to inflate itself. Um, mostly like, not like big fat. <laughs> just like it's gonna, gonna be a sphere. <laughs> <laughs> Puffer fish spines will come um, out. She's oh terrifying snake with spines. Um, so it's gonna inflate, you know, this upper neck area right here, and it's going to stand up a little bit and try and look kind of like a cobra. Mm. Um, it's also going to inhale mm. a lot of air and do fake strikes as it exhales very quickly. So it'll go, <laughs> and it's trying to be scary. Um, that sounds scary. It's, it's scary when he, he gets uh, nervous sometimes, and he's done it when I've been close to him, too. So it's scary. I can, yeah. I can attest to that. And I, I'm sure that there's, well, t this is not a poisonous snake, but they will, it, okay, wait. So, <laughs> <laughs> move away. <please. laughs> um, I always joke that I, I wouldn't bring a venomous snake, would I? Wow. <laughs> okay, so that striking movement that they're going to do, they're actually doing it with their mouth closed. So they're not actually going to bite when they strike. Um, it's very rare to actually get one of these to, to, to strike on defense. Um, if they keep getting messed with after they've struck a couple times, they will go limp. They'll flip their body over. See that nice dark mm -hmm. under there? They'll actually open their mouth and their tongue will hang out. <laughs> and they will. Just a, <laughs> the most elaborate fake just, death I, ploy and they'll, ever. They'll, they'll convulse a little bit too. They're like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> you know, they're just full on. And um, <laughs> they will emit a very foul smell out of their mouth and also out of their cloaca. And they will just lay there. And if you pick them up, they'll be limp. If you try and turn them right side over, they'll like roll back over. Be like, no, I I'm, am dead. I'm super dead. See? I am dead. <laughs> <laughs> so they're really cool. They play dead. I mean, there's just, it's really awesome. They're very dramatic. How do they have a foul smell that comes out of their mouth? Um, you know, I don't know. Do they have like know. a foul smell they, gland? I, well, yeah, I mean, I get, I, my, my bet is I know how the butt smells bad, <laughs> but there's a special way for its mouth to smell bad. That is interesting know. to me. I don't know. Really, yeah. So they, they, they roll over, they smell bad, they hang their tongue out of their mouth, and they convulse. Yeah. That is a complicated set of yeah. fake death. <laughs> They're serious about their, yeah. their acting. Yeah. <laughs> um, so then they'll wait for a while, and then when the predator goes away, the danger goes away, then they'll... Why would they'll the danger go them. away? They'd be like, oh, you're dead, now I don't want to eat you? But it stinks really bad. Okay. So okay, it's, yeah. it's musking and it's it's nasty. Yeah, recently so I, there was some turkey in my fridge and I I opened it up and I I was like, Ugh! and I didn't eat it. So it was, it's like I'm glad that. you didn't eat it. Yeah. 
Well, yeah, it was. It seemed like a pretty clear uh, sign, evolutionary sign. That was there was a lot of signals. Olfactory, yeah, yeah. yeah. Telling so, me not yeah. to do that. Yeah. So we were talking about venom. We were. Okay, so these are a colubrid. They're in the colubrid group, um, which means non-venomous or not harmful to humans. Okay. So it is thought it's been going back and forth, back and forth. Uh -huh. um, but right now, it's on the we think that they are slightly venomous. They're a rear fang snake, so it's not going to be like you know, mm -hmm. vipers that are going to inject venom into you, and it's you upside down. <laughs> Checking out the world that way. Um, so they kind of chew their venomous saliva into their prey. Mm -hmm. So they don't constrict. They just go for it, and then they're just chewing on it for quite a while. It's not a very right. humane death. <laughs> Uh, you know, it's the mm. circle of life. Mm. Yeah, it's natural. You want to sniff my finger? Venomous snake here. <laughs> <laughs> you're fine, you're fine. Uh, thanks for bringing them along. Animal Wonders, youtube.com slash. Animal Wonders. Mm. W-N-D-R-S. <laughs> YouTube.com slash, there's a link in the description. <laughs> Uh, Lindsay from Sex Explanations, thank you for sharing your your beautiful art thank and you. expanding our understanding of uh, female reproductive anatomy. And what is this thing even doing here? You're not reproductive. Bladder. Bladder. <laughs> Do you want to? Oh yeah. Uh, and thank you for watching this episode of the SciShow Talk Show. Uh, if you want to keep getting smarter with us, you can go to YouTube.com/SciShow and subscribe.